Welcome to The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. I'm Ken Ray. I'm Nicholas Raba. And I'm Nicholas Tachek. Nick and Nicholas are security experts. I'm, I'm not a security expert. I'm the guy who will sit here and say, what's that mean? Kind of like I did last week. Oh, and if you missed last week's show, well, it's still available to you. You can find the link to it at securemac.com. We are right now in the middle of a list of the 10 things to do to secure your new Mac. Or a new Mac, let's say. Maybe you got one for the kid who's going off to school. Maybe you have a, a, a parent or, or, or a friend or another relative who has decided to make the switch over from the Windows side to the Mac side. And you want to make sure that it's a good experience for them right away. That's what these guys are here to do. Make sure that we can keep those experiences safe for those people. And, you know, for you as well. Last week we had multiple user accounts for multiple users. Requiring a password on startup and waking your Mac from sleep. Uh, enabling automatic updates, enabling the built-in firewall, and finally using Gatekeeper to limit the apps that are allowed to run on the Mac in question. And now, five more. And number six on the list, use Time Machine and iCloud to automate file backups. This is kind of a weird one. I was surprised to see this on the list because this doesn't seem as much about security as it does just about playing a little CYA, I guess. Yeah, that that would be. Uh, it's still it's still so so important because there's a number of reasons why you would want to have a backup. Uh, even aside from just you know your computer's hardware failed and you or you lost your computer or it was stolen, mm-hmm. um, there you know you you might have accidentally deleted a file or more recently, uh, ransomware has been something rather large in the Windows uh, side of things for the past few years and it started coming over to the Mac side of things more recently. And what it will do is it will use encryption to uh, basically lock all of the, f- the files on your system. Mm-hmm. And it, once locked, you won't be able to access those files without the key to decrypt them, and you have to buy the key from the bad guys. And without that key, you wouldn't be able to get your files back. And if without a backup, you have no no option there. Um, so it, it, it's really critical. And then there's, there's the other thing, which is if you had somebody had, have access to your computer and they you know, del- deleted all your files, if it was something that wasn't under your control, mm-hmm. having a backup is just such an easy thing to do. And it is, it is just the, the thing you want to have in place. Should anything ever happen to your data for, for any reason, you'd have a recent backup, you'd be able to recover your files and, no matter if they were locked by uh, ransomware or if they were accidentally deleted or your computer fell in the bathtub, you know you don't you don't have to worry um, about losing your data. And with all the stuff we we have these days, from family photos to business documents to anything else, it's data is really important. And there's there's no no reason not to back it up. And Time Machine and iCloud actually, uh, in a lot of ways, I mean, they make it easier. At the same time, they. Not with iCloud. Um, with iCloud, you might be talking about a little bit of extra money so that you have a larger uh, storage. Um, with Time Machine, though, I mean, you, you're, you're going to get into some hardware questions at some point as far as, okay, well, what is it going to back that up to? Yes, exactly. You could either go the route of purchasing a time capsule from Apple, which conveniently doubles as a as an airport router for your Wi-Fi at home, uh, or you could buy any third-party uh, wired hard drive or network hard drive. It's really up to you at that point. Basically, you, you'd be choosing uh, the hardware based on your personal needs for how much space you, you need for your backups. If you want your Mac to be backing up wirelessly over your home network or if you want to be plugging the hard drive in uh, for the backups to occur. So that that really, it would be up to to each individual uh, to decide what their specific needs are. Hard drives are are relatively inexpensive these days. Um, especially compared to the cost of, of trying to restore data from a, a you know a hard drive that failed or or losing data completely, it's a rather cheap form of insurance. Uh, that's just there's again no real reason not to be backing up your files should anything happen to them. And I do also say that I mean there, there's going to be a cost um, a cost analysis that you're going to have to do there, but then. On the other hand, you may actually have an external hard drive because you edit video, you edit a lot of images, you edit audio, you just need extra storage. You may already have the thing that you would need to use uh, for your uh, for your time machine backup. So it, it doesn't necessarily cost you anything. You may have already spent the money without realizing. Exactly. And they've made it so easy to set up time machine. 
uh, under your system preferences, you have your icon time machine. Uh, you plug in your hard drive, and then from there you select disk, and you turn it on, and you let it you let it do its thing. You could see uh, the menu bar icon, um, show time machine and menu bar, and from there you could see the last time you backed up. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you from personal experience that if you don't do it in a few days, it'll it'll start putting a little friendly reminder up in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> yeah, don't don't keep on watching that number build up. It's been 148 days since I've done a backup. <laughs> Think all that data you could have lost in 148 days. Yeah. Uh, another thing to consider with with that number and just with backups in general, the earlier you set up backups, the sooner after you, know, you, you get your new Mac set up, the faster those backups are going to be. The first time you run Time Machine, it has to go through all the files on your system that it's about to back up. And if you've never backed up before and you have 40 or 50 gigs of files, it's going to take a while. I know that from personal experience. Uh, <laughs> you just have to let the Mac run you know, for a day or two over the weekend and do its thing. Uh, basically, if you set it up right from the start, Time Machine will start backing up your files right from the start, and it will have a lot less work to do each time it backs up. And yeah. that will make backups quick and painless, and that's what you'd want for the best experience there. And every time you go to the Genius Bar, you go to the repair shop, they ask you if you have a backup. Right. Because if any of your hardware is failing, what are they going to do? They're going to start replacing components. And if you don't have a backup, you're losing out on that data. One of the things that fascinates me talking to you guys is you keep talking about how easy Apple has made so many uh, different uh, different of the security aspects. Uh, amazingly, uh, this includes um, what happens if you lose um, a device. Um, number seven on your list, uh, turn on Find My Mac in case your computer's ever lost or stolen. Again, this sounds like a no-brainer. I guess the two questions I have is, you know, why wouldn't anyone do this? And then the second question is, uh, how do you do it? Uh, you know, as far as why somebody wouldn't do it, the the only thing I can think of is they either don't think their computer's ever going to get lost or stolen, or they just don't realize it's a feature that's available. Although I believe Apple does ask if you want to set it up during the initial setup of, of OS X when you first set up your new account. Um, if you don't have it set up already, it can be found on the iCloud settings uh, in System Preferences. And from there... There's a, uh, a section called Find My Mac, and when you enable it, it will basically work by uh, every time your Mac connects to the internet with Wi-Fi or or any other uh, Wi-Fi or wired, uh, it will be able to uh, Apple will be able to locate it based either um, uh, on the location of the the Wi-Fi router or or cell tower or wherever whatever means you're using to connect to the internet. And it will be able to give you a good idea of where the computer is. So if you left it, you know, at your friend's house, you'd be able to see, oh, it's over at my friend's house. I can go pick it up or say, hey, my laptop's sitting on your couch. Can you run it over to me? Uh, If you lost it at an airport, uh, you could see if your computer's making its way across the country on the wrong flight. (laughs) Uh, Basically, it gives you the, the ability to see where your Mac was last seen, which can be a great aid when you're contacting law enforcement in the case of a stolen computer um, which is always always the recommended route to go. If you if you know your computer's been stolen rather than just being lost, you don't want to be trying to track it down yourself. Uh, yeah, you'll yeah. give that information to, to the correct authorities, and they'll be able to help you out, and it, it'll go better for everybody. So once you have it enabled under the iCloud settings, if you actually need to find your your Mac or your iPhone or any other Apple hardware uh, that you have this feature enabled on, like your iPad, you'd go to iCloud.com. You'd log in with your Apple ID from there, and then you'd click on, it's called Find My iPhone, but from there you can see all of your Apple hardware. Um, You click on it, it'll show you a map. Um, You have a couple buttons from there, play sound, lock, and erase Mac. And if you play the sound, it'll start playing on your device, so you could figure out where it's at if you left it somewhere nearby, mm-hmm. want to track it down. Um, if you know that you have lost it and there's pretty much no chance on getting it back, and then you could do Erase Mac. <laughs> Hopefully you got your time machine back up so that erasing the Mac is not going to crush your soul. 
Exactly. If, if you don't want to quite go the route of erasing your Mac, you can just lock it, which you'd give it a passcode uh, that would need to be entered to unlock it. But you can also have it display a message on the screen, which could be, you know, if found reward, please contact phone number, email address, basically letting whoever has a computer know that it is a lost device and that you'd like it back. Or that you're onto them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true, too. And that's, that's the other thing. Don't think that you're a PI and you found where it's located and you're going to knock on somebody's door. No, you're not Batman. <laughs> Don't try to be. No, seriously, because, I, again, I mean, the problem with having done daily Apple News for as long as I have is I can't remember exactly when something happened. But I remember there was a really bad story recently where somebody went after, relatively recently, somebody went after their computer because they you know, found out where it was. And if memory serves, somebody ended up dead. And it's and yeah. and that's no matter how important your computer is, that's not cool. Obviously, in fact, it's ridiculous to say that's not cool because it's decidedly <laughs> worse than not cool. No, no computer is worth somebody's health or life or anything like that. It's, right. It's easy to forget because we all love our devices, but it's so important. It's never worth getting hurt or injured or anything over a computer. Number eight on the checklist. Uh, turn on File Vault to automatically encrypt your data. Oh my gosh, Nick said something earlier. He said, "Do this sooner than later." Oh, yes. You get your new Mac. Turn on Fire File Vault right away, because if you wait over time, and you have all your bajillions of movies, photos, emails, all those files, it takes even longer to encrypt it all. So when you get your new Mac. Turn it on right away. It'll encrypt your data from there on forward, and you'll you'll be happy on the amount of time you saved. Now, one of the reasons, you know, if a user's like, "Well, why would I want to use File Vault?" Uh, you know, I have a login password required for my account, and I don't let it wake from sleep without requiring a password. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if you remove the hard drive from a laptop or a desktop, and you plug it into a different computer that computer can still see and access all those files. It doesn't care about your user account or, or permissions there. With File Vault, it's actually encrypting on the fly each and every one of your files. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to yank the hard drive out of your computer and try and access it from a different computer, they couldn't do it. They need the, they need the pass, passphrase, the passcode to unlock that um, and basically makes it so your data is... Uh, useless to anybody trying to get at it if they don't have the the key to unlock it. And this uh, this would be a file vault is something you can find uh, in settings. Yes, again that can be found in the security and privacy settings. There's okay. a tab for file vault, and it will uh, when you enable it, it has you set up a recovery key. Um, basically, that's if you would forget your password or need to access. Uh, your files later on. You you take your recovery key. You'd want to print it out and keep it in a home safe or uh, bank to a safety deposit box. Uh, and then that key can also be used in the event that you don't remember what password you used to encrypt your your information. And they have two options here. They have the create recovery key, and they also have the allow iCloud account to unlock my disk. So using your Apple ID, you'd also be able to do it that way. Now, in my opinion, that's one of the lesser secure ways mm -hmm. because if you're using that same password for your iCloud account as anything else that gets compromised, then it's just as easy to gain access to that as well. Sure. Well, and that's one of the things. I would imagine we're going to talk about uh, password best practices at some point because that's a whole big hairy thing on its own. I'm thinking in particular, gosh, it was yesterday or the day before, as we record this, came out that MySpace had a lot of its uh, password information stolen. And there have to be people who don't even remember that they had a MySpace account, but if they are, like I used to do back in the day, using one password for everything, I mean, this, this, this MySpace account that practically doesn't even exist in anybody's head anymore uh, may be giving access to, to tons of other stuff, but... Like I say, uh, passwords have to be something that we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about a little bit down the road. Uh, number nine on the list: review your privacy settings to limit access by apps. This this sounds a little level two o one. Talk to me about what you're saying here. Uh, okay, well, have you ever been using your Mac and seen the little message pop up saying 
this app wants to access your your contact, uh, your address book. You have to you have to give it uh, explicit permission to do so. That, along with some of the other uh, services on the computer, what's considered by Apple to be your private information, it requires your permission before it can access it. Um, if you clicked the button by accident, you weren't really paying attention, you can still review what apps have access to your contacts or your calendars, reminders, any of that information that maybe, you know, hey, this app, why, why does it actually need my address book? It doesn't send email. It doesn't, you know, contact people. Uh, you can revoke the access from that screen. So it's always a good idea to kind of double check. Uh, in addition, there are apps that will, uh, when you're surfing the web, for example, you know, this site wants to know your your location. Um, mm-hmm. It's generally used to kind of say, here are the stores around you. Well, again, with an app that has requested that information, it might not be something that you want it to have anymore. So that's the centralized location for you to check and disable any of those settings. So you say review those privacy settings. Where do you go to do that? It's under your system preferences, under security and privacy, and then the privacy uh, tab along the top side and you'll see you'll see on the left hand side a list of the different the different privacy uh, features like location services contacts calendars and then from there you'll see the individual applications that have requested permission for it under location services under mine I have maps calendars reminder and safari so when you for Safari, for example, when you go to when you go to Yelp or Google and you're searching for a local business, a lot of times it'll ask for your location to help try to make those things pop up for you easier. Mm-hmm. And if you disable that, it's going to restrict some of those settings by default. So usability will be restricted a little bit in those cases, um, but that's where you'd enable or disable it as well. Speaking of disabling, we have reached uh, number 10, disable spotlight suggestions. This never even crossed my mind that this would be a security issue. Talk to me about this. Why? Why do I want to disable those and, and, and what kind of information am I giving away if I don't? Well, basically Apple, in, I believe it was a couple of years ago when they first introduced it, uh, before Spotlight would just uh, work by indexing all the, the files on your computer, the names of the files, the content of text documents. So when you search with Spotlight, it's able to locate that file or application really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Apple kind of expanded its use. So it could do stuff like check the web for if you're searching for what movies are playing near me or you know, what time does baseball game start at. By doing so, it's sending information to Apple, uh, which happens to be, even if you're not, you know, if you're looking for a local file on your computer or some text, you know, say from a legal document or a tax document, it's still sending that information to Apple as part of the uh, Spotlight Suggestions program, hmm. which uh, you know helps Spotlight give more pertinent results to you. But it's still sending this information over to Apple that you probably don't necessarily want to be sending them. Basically, for for confidentiality, for your privacy, by disabling it, you, yeah, you are taking away a little bit of the usability as far as spotlight's ability to you know, suggest movies to you or, or music or concerts around you that kind of stuff um, but the trade-off there for anybody concerned about their privacy uh, it's kind of a no-brainer to have that be disabled mm-hmm. and you you uh, disable that where that one is found in the spotlight uh settings for system preferences uh when you open the spotlight settings there's a a big list of of search results and then down one checkbox underneath that whole list is allow spotlight suggestions in spotlight and look up and you'd want to uncheck that checkbox now a list of of 10 things it seems like a big thing especially if it's stuff that you have to do over and over and over again but i mean a couple of times uh, in this conversation you've said uh, start off doing this and it'll make things easier down the road the crux of everything you're saying is if you start this way with a brand new machine, you're going to eliminate a lot of headache uh, along the way. Exactly. It's it's one of those things where once you start practicing the, the best guidelines for security and privacy, getting into good habits right from the start with uh, a new machine, um, it makes it easier to – in the sense that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff in the future. You've already got your backups being made if you lose data. You've already got your computer – uh, firewall turned on it, just simple things that take you m- maybe 20 minutes when you first set up your mac um, 
to, to go ahead and set all this stuff up correctly. And once it is, you don't, you don't have to think about it anymore. So it's, it's something that is just a good, good thing to do right from the start and get in a good habit, uh, and then continue to stay with good, good, uh, security habits going forward. It will, it will you know, basically be the best thing you can do to protect your computer and your data. So here's the thing. We're, we're, we're sort of gearing these topics towards yeah, people who have a new Mac or people who either, you know, have a new Mac for themselves or like we said at the beginning for like a student in their life or mom or dad or somebody like that. If you're sitting there with an old Mac and, and, and you haven't done any of these things, do you need a new Mac? No, the, these steps can apply to anybody, even if you don't have a new Mac. It's a good idea to go through, uh, basically go through the checklist and, and look at your settings and assess where things are at. Some of the things in the checklist would obviously take a bit more time. If you haven't been setting up backups, for example, or Fire Vault, File Vault, they will take uh, a bit of time to run through their initial setup. After that, everything will be back to smooth sailing. Uh, but these are these definitely can apply to anybody. You know, if your computer is brand new, or if it's a few years old, or if you've switched from an old computer to uh, migrate your files to new hardware, any of those situations, these steps will still apply and still be relevant. And in a future show, we'll talk about, uh, I, I would assume there are going to be some differences. I mean, yes, these steps are still relevant, but there are going to be other things you want to look at for a Mac that you've been running for a while. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, that and a whole bunch of other topics in, uh, in, in shows to come. Uh, in the meantime, we went over a lot of information today. If, if there are anything in particular that you have questions over or you just want to get a, a better idea of what this stuff will look like, securemac.com. Now, that's where you can keep up with all kinds of security news as well as the topics that we hit uh, on today's show or shows coming up in the future. If there is a particular security question that you have or a topic that you would like to see us cover, uh, we have an email address, checklist at securemac.com. That's checklist at securemac.com. And you can remember that because... You're listening to The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. I have to go do a lot of stuff to my computer now, guys. Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's a good way to, to get set up. Uh, you know, even if you haven't you know, gone through the steps beforehand, it's never too late to make your computer more secure. Stay secure, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>